Aw, oh, hell yeah. 16.30. About time to get off work. Wait a minute. What's Gunny doing? Hey there, you who. I need three for this working party. Get out information right now. Come on, man. It's the weekend. I'm trying to get out of here. I didn't ask all that. Hurry up. All right. Guess it's time for another working party. Sound attention. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Working Party Podcast. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For all the all that are brand new to the podcast, welcome. Welcome. It's good to see slash hear you. <laughs> uh, or you hear you hear me, I guess. I don't know how it works. But um, quick premise um, for those of you new listeners. I know the old listeners are like, oh, my God, here we go again with this breakdown. But basically, the Working Party Podcast, it's an idea that I got uh, while serving the military because a, a working party basically consists of anything that you don't feel like doing. It's like a, you know, they make you clean up a, an area. They make you set up chairs. They make you, you know. Literally, sometimes you'll have to like hear, like clear an area of feces, human or otherwise, <laughs> with gloves or shovels or whatever they might give you. And yeah, it's never a very pleasant time. Working parties are almost never fun. But the fun you can have with a working party is the type of fun that can only be had in the military because it's like it's a miserable time, but you you make friends. You talk to people to your left and to your right, and you just you make the best out of a, out of a bad situation. And you that's where the the real camaraderie I think begins. That's where the majority of the friends that you make in the military. That's where they come from. They come from these times of misery. They come from these times of uh, you know it's not a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not, but that's where you make the good friends, and that's where the idea behind this podcast came from. Now, with all of that being said, um, this is a military-themed podcast. Of course, I'm going to use a lot of jargon sometimes, um, and uh, hopefully I don't lose any of y'all. I am live on TikTok right now, so if I break my train of thought to answer questions, that's what that's going on. I'm going to do my best to give the users a shout-out on the podcast. Um, any of y'all... You know, sorry if it, it irritates, but uh, nobody gives me comments, good, bad, or indifferent on the uh, the podcast. So I'm just gonna keep doing it until somebody tells me to cut it out. <laughs> but with that being said, all of the views and opinions expressed on this podcast, that none of them are official views of the United States military, the government, or any agency. So don't um, you know? Don't go running to your local news station saying that uh, you know your host, Staff Sergeant. Ollie South is trying to invade the state of Texas for all of the bees. Are there bees in Texas? I imagine so. Texas is so big. They got to have bees there. Um, last time we were trying to raid Texas for the armadillo ranches. <laughs> but there's no, I don't know. I really wish there was an armadillo ranch. If there was, I'd go to it and visit the armadillos and hang out with them. That's the goal. Actually, I'm going to get out of the military and I'm going to fucking start an armadillo ranch. So, yeah, stand by for that. So that's the the premise, the the idea of what a podcast is or the idea of what my, this podcast is uh, has been laid out the Disclaimers out. And also, um, it should be stated that this is the latest podcast that I'm ever going to release. It is 9 o'clock on Monday. Um, usually, I record these things on Saturdays or even Sundays at the most. Or sometimes Monday mornings. I've done that before. But yeah, um, this week, I am on a late schedule. Super late. And there goes the dogs. The dogs are barking. Actually, I'm going to pause this, the recording so you don't have to hear that. All right, all right. So let's uh, do some editing, some, some some magic for that later on. But yeah, so I'm late as hell recording this time because I had a wild weekend. Um, this weekend, I was in Las Vegas, Nevada, which was a freaking great time. Las Vegas is such a fun place. Um, if you haven't been, uh, go. It's all opened up now. COVID is, it's obviously still a thing. You know, there are masks, but majority of people weren't wearing masks anywhere. It was basically pandemonium. <laughs> it was just like it was back in the day. Uh, you know, I've been to Vegas several times now. I was there uh, for band camp <laughs> when I was 17. So that wasn't like a big party time, band camp being as fun as it was. But um, yeah, I, I, I've been there, there and then I went there just to party. Uh, and then I went there last in or 2019, I was there. And then this time I went and this was fun. This was a really good time. Um, I'm not a big gambler. Um, I have friends that are by, by the way, big shout out to my boy, Relazi, uh, just came out. He's a Vegas native and he came out and showed us a really good time. It was fun. It was a really fun time, uh, bopping around Vegas and checking it out. And then like, he showed me like the, the highs and lows of gambling. Cause this dude, like just throwing money down, like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> on these damn craps tables and he pulled out like i think 400 at first and for me like growing up poor like i did 
seeing $400 go away that fast and easy was really unsettling. You know, I, I obviously have that kind of money now, but it's like, I still am not comfortable just throwing it onto a table and, you know, praying for some winning dice to be rolled. But I saw him, you know, do this. And then he came back, got up, you know, started winning big money, big money, and then lost it all on a roulette table. And then we started hitting slot machines. And this dude is like a good luck charm or something. He's like throwing money. Like we just, put a 20 into the slot machine or he put, he put a hundred into that thing and would just double his money, triple his money, you know, put a hundred in, walk away with 500 almost. It was crazy to see. So thank you so much for showing me that. I had a really great time. I want a little bit of money that I ended up losing it all this morning. Trying to, trying to be the guy. Oh, I'm going to double it. I'm going to double it. <laughs> Didn't work out in my favor, but it's all the, the thing with gambling that I, I learned from some people that do gamble and uh, the way I look at it is like you got to set aside money to do it. Like don't go in there with your credit card or your bank card and just keep pulling money out and freaking going crazy. And that's how, that's how you lose your shirt. That's how you lose your rent money. That's how you lose your, you know, your, your car payment. That's how you lose all your money. So don't do that. But, you know, if you know you got a Vegas trip coming up in a couple weeks or a couple months, start putting money aside now. Walk into that thing or set it into a separate like account that you can pull from. Pull that cash out and play with that. And then once you once it's gone, it's gone. Don't be the guy that's like, oh, I got more money in my bank. I could, I could just go to the ATM and get some more. You know, then you know, then you're losing your shirt. Then you're looking at a really bad time. So don't be that guy. But uh, yeah, it's it's fun. Um, you know, I can see why people get addicted to it. It's it's the winning is f crazy. It's a rush. But uh, yeah, I'm still not to the point in my finances where I'm comfortable throwing money just down into the drain like that. So. <laughs> That was fun. Big shout out to to Vegas and to Isaac for you know just showing a really good time out there. It was it was a blast. Um, gambling responsibly. That was my note here. I put notes here to freaking follow. I'm trying to follow my notes. All right, all right. So I'll get to your question. Go ahead and shoot it down there, Mister Migi Mindy. <laughs> throw throw your question down. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I am recording my podcast, so I'm not going to derail too much. But I'll definitely get to it before this uh, thing is over. If not, uh, shoot me a DM afterwards but anywho anywho um so what happened while we were in vegas um i found out that the strip is it stinks it's not like a stink like new orleans like new orleans like oh my god bourbon street if you've ever been there or uh my okinawa peeps if you ever go to like kintown that place stinks like it smells like an open sewer the strip doesn't smell that bad but it didn't smell pleasant um i think that during the pandemic people just forgot how to put deodorant on and that's the problem <laughs> like people haven't had to leave their house so the showering and and smelling good is not a thing and then some people um, compensate for not bathing, I guess, by dousing themselves in cologne. So, and then everybody's smoking, you know, smoking cigarettes, smoking cigars. Uh, I believe that weed is now legal out there. So I had a nice cornucopia of smells, uh, weed, cigar, cigarette, perfume, BO, and just, you know, tourists. It, it was stinky. And that's the thing, like... Vegas, the the locals don't go out, go down to the strip. They don't they don't fuck around over there. They they mainly hang out like in the outskirts. They go maybe to Fremont Street stuff like that. But you're not going to see a lot of locals unless they're at work. If they're working, obviously they will be there. But yeah, there's not a lot of locals there. It's all touristy and it's fun. I was thinking about this actually because Vegas is the kind of place. It's like. Vegas is the place where the entire world goes to party. Like, you go to Vegas, you're going to meet people from all over the world. You're going to see people from Africa, from the Middle East, from India, from Asia, China, uh, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, everything. Like, they, everybody goes to Vegas to party. It's like a, it's the one place in the world where you're not going to see a whole – I mean, you do see drama. Like, you saw, we saw people getting into little scuffles here and there. We saw some madness. But mainly – it was just a good time for everybody. So I think that's fun. I think that's a really cool thing about Las Vegas. And then I think this post pandemic world, everybody's kind of like, obviously you got your Karens, you got your people that are looking to be offended by everything, but you got a lot of people that are just looking to have fun and let their hair down and let loose a little bit and enjoy themselves. So that was fun. Vegas. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, drank a little bit. Um, <laughs> definitely drank a little bit. And the cool thing is you can walk around with your, with your open containers out there. So it was fun to be able to just kind of while out, go around. And I, I got to explore this strip a lot more. We went into every casino basically. And I walked about 17,000 freaking miles. And of course I wasn't wearing good walking shoes. I was wearing shoes that uh, hurt my feet. Like my feet are all swollen up. My, my toes are not happy. Um, obviously being a jarhead, I've, I've experienced walks that are quite long in the past, but, uh, yeah, this was a beast. This was a beast. My feet hurt, but luckily I was able to find some, uh, some nice flip flops <laughs> to wear. So my feet aren't screaming too bad. Uh, you're very welcome on that question. Hopefully, hopefully it helps. Um, if you got any more questions, let me know. Sorry, I'm talking to the TikTok people. All my listeners are like, motherfucker, stop. Anywho, 
Anywho, so what else happened when I was out there? Oh, apparently there was a Miss Universe pageant. Um, surprising, because I didn't think that they still had these. I thought that that was like an antiquated thing, like in today's cancel culture where everybody's this, that, and the other. I didn't think that they still had Miss Universe or Miss This, Miss That pageants. I thought that that was kind of antiquated and, and over. I, I really thought that that was over, but apparently there was a freaking contest this weekend, and Mexico won. Um, so congratulations. Obviously, anybody that knows anything knows that Mexican females or Latina women in general are probably the most beautiful women on the planet. So no surprise there. <laughs> no surprise there that they won. Um, I don't know her name. And I, I, yeah, so that was good job on her, I guess. Um, I didn't watch it. Obviously, I just saw everybody I saw posting on social media about it. And then I saw a lot of, uh, you know, uh, some of my, my, my friends that are of Mexican descent, females specifically like saying, ah, we told y'all like, we like, what the fuck you mean? We like, not you, definitely not you. Like y'all need to sit down. <laughs> it's a thing. It's not like a, it's not a rule. It's not like an automatic. Like, oh, you're from here. You're beautiful. No, unfortunately, um, for some of y'all fucking animals, it's definitely not that way. <laughs> It is what it is, though. We, we can't all be astronauts. You know, we can't all be beauty queens. Some of us got to fucking clean the janitor closet. Some of us got to sweep the, stro- <laughs> the floor. Some of us some of us can't be that good looking. Obviously, I'm the king of the good, not good looking people. So <laughs> anyways, anyways, um, this is going to be a pretty short episode because, like I said, I was kind of out and about, moving about, milling about, having a crazy time. So I didn't have a lot of time to prep this episode. So all my regular listeners, um, all three of you. <laughs> I'm probably like, mother, this is bullshit. We're going to unsubscribe. Well, please don't. Um, next episode will be better. I will have more time to prepare and uh, put out more quality next week. But this week, I'm still going to get some good knowledge. I got a really good story for you as far as the military goes. Um, and, 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 ah, some current events. What else happened current event-wise? Um, so is the Israel versus Pakistan, or Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> the Israel versus Palestine thing. Um, I've had people talk to me and they're like, why are you concerned about this, that, or the other when you should be more concerned about this? Are you going to deploy? Are you going to go to war? Are we doing this? Are we doing that? Like, I don't fucking know, man. Like, On any given day, your average military member doesn't know when they're getting off of work, much less if we're going to be going to war anytime soon with any country in the Middle East, in Asia, in Antarctica, anywhere. We don't, like, we don't really know that. Now, is there writing on the wall for a possible conflict? Yes. But at the same time, um, per my knowledge, the, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been going on for so bloody long that this is not like – this isn't unusual. This happens every couple – I mean, growing up, I, I've seen this happen several times. You know, uh, Palestine shoots a bunch of rockets at Israel, and then Israel um, obviously has the bigger stick. So they just wade through them and knock all kinds of buildings down, and everybody protests. There was actually a big protest in Vegas. Um, you know, obviously being in the military, I freaking ran away. <laughs> I didn't run away, but you know, we as military, we can't, we're not supposed to be in the middle of these protests. Like, you know, especially nowadays where protests so frequently turn violent. Uh, I definitely avoided it, but there was a giant protest on the corner around uh, the, it was near the Venetian and like um, the Treasure Island, that corner over there. There was a ton of people with the flag out there. I don't know what the hell they're protesting. It's like, dude, we're in Vegas. So this is silly, but people want to protest. So, yeah, more power to them. They did it peacefully. There was no craziness um, that I saw, but yeah, I definitely avoided it. But yeah, it's it's not a new conflict, unfortunately. Um, I don't really lean one way or another on it. Like I'm not a I'm not a freaking Zionist. I think that's the word that the conspiracy nuts use. I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm not anti-Palestine. I'm not anti-Israel. Like I I feel like it's a conflict that has nothing to do with me. I mean, except for my 1% Ashkenazi Jewishness, that does have something to do with me, I guess. So I should have a dog in this fight, but I don't. I really don't. So it's one of those things. It's, 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 un- it's really unfortunate to see innocent people die anytime. Um, that's the, the ugly truth about war, especially in modern times. Um, you, you just see a lot of innocent people getting murked because that's the, the idea nowadays is because standing armies and pitch battles and stuff like that, that's kind of antiquated. You don't really see a whole lot of that. But what you do see is you see countries trying to inflict damage on each other in a way that causes the other side to want to quit. Um, obviously, for the U.S., that's been our strategy for a long time. Um, you know, you look at the, the wars in in World War II and in Vietnam, um, obviously the first Iraq war, not so much nowadays because the landscape of war has changed so much. Um, you know, if you if you study these things. But like back in World War II, what did we do? We bombed cities. We bombed industrial areas to stop the war efforts and also to make the people not support a war anymore, to put pressure on the government to quit. So that's kind of what you see. You don't see armies really battling it out anymore, especially, you know, there's no island hopping. And in a situation like Gaza, uh, the Palestine and Israel, there's no cities being taken. There's no giant tank battles happening. But it's a, it's a sucky situation because you do see a lot of civilians getting smoked. 
So I just hope that uh, a resolution is reached soon that matches and, and suits everybody and brings peace to the area because war, in my opinion, is it's a it's a it's hell it really is um for the people that are involved for the families the moms the dads the sisters the brothers that lose people to the soldiers you know not i mean don't get me wrong do we as marines as sailors as as airmen and soldiers do we want to go serve and do we want to go fight yes of course you have that urge but make no bones about it this is not a glamorous thing like war is not it's not the movies you know it's not running up Mount Suribachi and punching a, an enemy in the face. It's not storming a beach and punching a Nazi. It's, it's hell. It's, it's, it's blood and it's death and it's all that. I have, I have not been, obviously, in a combat environment, so I can't speak too much on it. But from what I've heard and what I've seen with my buddies that have seen all that crap and came back, it's not a fucking good time. So hopefully a peaceful solution comes to mind or comes to, comes to fruition soon and everybody can go back to life as normal and we can pe peacefully coexist because... The real problem is the aliens. <laughs> the aliens are fucking coming. Like the dead in Pentagon is talking about aliens and UFOs on the regular now. It's being released almost on a regular basis on the main news networks, but nobody cares. All they care about is Trump, and all they care about is Biden falling downstairs and Kamala Harris. And this. it's like nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about the stuff that's important, like the fact that fucking UFOs are flying around over our heads. And the government is acknowledging it now. Look it up. Like the... The Tic Tac UFOs, the, the pyramids in the sky recently, the Phoenix lights from the 80s. It's, it's a phenomenon that has been going on and is like acknowledged now. It's freaking acknowledged. So we got to pick an end to that. Let's stop fighting each other. Let's get ready to fight E.T. I will punch E.T. in the face. Like that little bastard from the movie E.T., like his little squat body, I will punch him in the face. What up? Welcome to the show. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'll punch the shit out of E.T. if he comes up to me um, and flies over my fucking crib. I hate E.T. I, I used to have nightmares about E.T., actually. He scared the hell out of me as a kid. His teeth freaked me out. He was like, ah, his teeth. I was afraid he was going to bite me, even though he didn't bite anybody in the movie, and he was the most peaceful alien of all time. I'll still punch him in the face. Um, sorry, E.T., if you're listening. Actually, you know what? UFOs, if you are listening to my podcast, which I doubt, and if you are, you better be subscribed to me on Spotify <laughs> or iTunes. You know, give me some views, please, E.T., but yeah, come get me. Come get me. I'll, I'll put you on the podcast. We'll talk about what your intentions on the earth are. That would be one hell of an interview. That would be fun as fuck. Um, I would be greatly honored if an E.T. would come over here. Not E.T., the one I'm scared of because I'd punch him, but like a regular, other, like a, another one, like the gray ones or like one of those sexy blue ones from Star Wars <laughs> with, the, with the tails for ears or <laughs> the little noodle things. Yeah, one of those can come over here. Yeah. All day. Come on in. <laughs> and we'll talk. As long as you don't try to enslave me. That's the thing about aliens. Everybody's like, oh, if they are coming, they are peaceful. No, the hell they're not. Look at any situation where a more advanced civilization comes in contact with a non-advanced civilization, uh, i.e. the conquest of the freaking American West, uh, the landing of the freaking pilgrims, the Spanish in the Central and South America and on the Caribbean islands and Africa, everywhere, uh, China, when the Mongols came over. With, if there's a situation or a civilization that is more technologically advanced, has more military might, more science, more this, more that, what are they going to do to the native population? They are not making friends. <laughs> they are there to get something from them. <clears throat> So if they come over here, uh, I'd like to do an interview first before the enslavement starts, and then, and then after that we can we can get to fighting aliens. Somebody has called me a pogue on my my live stream. Um, a pogue, for those of you that don't understand what that is, is a person other than grunt. And yes, that is me, one hundred percent. But I did go to the field. All right, I went to the field for four days. Four days I was out there in the dirt. Actually, it wasn't really dirt because I had a cot. That was off the ground. It had a cushion on it. So, but it's still dirt. And there's there's earwigs and there's bugs. <laughs> I didn't have a roof. It was miserable. I ate MREs. I had to go to the porta potty instead of a freaking bathroom with running water. It was a freaking nightmare. So yeah, call me a pogue all you want. I still get paid. <laughs> all right. So we talked about Miss Universe. We talked about aliens. It was not that wasn't even on my schedule. I started talking about that because it's interesting to me. Uh, if you don't like aliens, then you're listening to the wrong podcast because I'm all about them motherfuckers. All right, let's hit next one. Um, okay, so there's Pakistan wandering around, puking snail. Oh, nice no, for later. Oh, I saw in the news recently. I saw something in the news recently where a a gentleman unfortunately passed away during a hot dog eating contest. Yeah, you heard that right. A gentleman passed away. I think it was in Northern California. 
It was like a game of some kind or an event. He passed away while at a hot dog eating contest. He, he was eating hot dogs so fast and died because he choked on them and they could not save him. Very unfortunate, obviously, you know, big rest in peace to him, condolences to the family, except he's got a family member, I want to say it's his son, that's trying to sue the organization that held the contest for wrong because they did not warn his family member of the dangers of eating hot dogs rapidly. You heard that right once again. He's suing them because somebody fucking didn't know to breathe between bites. (laughs) To maybe not inhale hot dogs. That's insane to me. That right there is an abuse of the court system. I mean, is it sad? Yes, like I said, of course. Um, But how the fuck do do you want me to explain to you how dangerous it is to eat hot dogs now? Like, do I got to freaking give you a safety brief before you begin a hot dog eating contest? Like, hey, if you inhale a hot dog into your fucking lung, you might die. Don't do that. (laughs) Like, fuck, man. And then he's suing, and then some the the poor poor guy obviously he's probably grief stricken and doing this craziness, but his like this lawyer that's goading him on that's taking this case like what the fuck kind of lawyer are you? That's like the worst lawyer ever. Like you are a human. Um, what sort of looking for? I, I got kicked off live last time I went live. I think it was because of my profane language. I'm looking for a nice way to call this guy a freaking cock goblin. Um, Oh, well, there it goes. I'm probably gonna get banned now. But yeah, that guy, that lawyer, you know, go fucking take a long walk off a short pier. <laughs> like, you know, that's awful, man. You're exploiting situations and exploiting um, families and grief. That's terrible. Shame on you, lawyer, man. Shame on you. If you listen to this, then fuck you. <laughs> mm. I'm seeing a comment from the gentleman that called me a pogue saying the admin in the field is ridiculous. I agree. It was fucking pointless. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a job. There's a job for everybody out there. I don't want to go too much into the details of it because it's classified T-14, aliens, Area 51, fucking <laughs> S-6. No, but it's, yeah, it's we have a job out there. It's all about accountability and making sure people don't get lost. And then if, uh, you know, 10 guys leave the tent or 10 guys leave the compound, 10 guys should come back. And if that doesn't happen, then admin needs to know why. So that's what we do in the field. It's uh, definitely not what I am used to, but it was interesting. And I'm looking forward to doing it more because I'm actually going to be heading out to uh, to ITX later this year. 29 Palms, good times. I've heard nothing but good things about that. I hear the views are, are amazing. I hear the amenities are very nice. Um, five-star hotels only, perfect Wi-Fi, and dancing girls and drinks with umbrellas in them for everybody on the station. That's what I've heard about 29 Palms. And anybody that's listening to this that knows anything about 29 Palms knows I am being full of shit right now because 29 Palms is hell on earth. It is the ass crack of the United States. It's a good place to practice fighting in the desert, though. So that's why we're going. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, so that's uh, that's later this year, though. Uh, I don't know how the hell I'm going to podcast out there. I might have to do a bunch of episodes in advance and just you know have them on a time release. Or maybe I'll go on a hiatus. Maybe I'll take a break from social media and everything like that and then have to rebuild everything. Psych. Big pass on that. Sounds like a terrible idea. You know, I'm just starting to get the ball rolling on this. The podcast just hit a thousand downloads, actually, so I am very happy for that. Big shout out to all the the listeners and everybody that checks it out. Thank you so much. One thousand downloads is, you know, it's it took a little longer than I wanted to, but once again, I've said this a million times, and I say this a million times more. It's a marathon, not a race. I understand that this is not going to be an overnight thing. I have no fan base to speak of, like a lot of the guys I listen to, like the Rogans, the Burrs. Uh, Dan Cummins, Time Suck Podcast, stuff like that. These guys, they had pretty big followings before they started podcasting. So, of course, their podcast is going to be a lot more more widespread, more listened to, stuff like that. So I'm kind of starting from uh, way back in the field. But at the end of the day, my goal is still to make this thing something that can change lives and hopefully help people, hopefully help people. So all that being said, so we talked about the guy. You know, big, like I said, rest in peace, Mr. Hot Dog Eating Guy. Sorry for your lost family, but stop trying to sue the fucking companies for somebody dying during a hot dog eating contest. Like, that's silly. That is silly. And if you know anything more, somebody should let me know because that's, that's the stupidest shit I ever heard of. All right. Let's talk about let's talk about history. And I'm going to get into the history thing real quick by stating something that really irritated the hell out of me about this trip to Vegas. Because we are walking around aimlessly. And don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of spontaneity. I'm a big fan of having fun and not really having an agenda. But at the same time, walking around with my feet hurting and everything, you know, just kind of being chaos and not nobody knows what's going on. And I'm tired and I'm hungry and blah, blah, blah. That it gets very, very, very irritating to me. So not having a plan for something is the worst. 
And the only thing worse than not having a plan is having a plan, but nobody knowing how to execute or follow the directions. I know I sound like a freaking Nazi or like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a dictator when I say that kind of stuff. But once I tell this story about the battle, um, it'll make a little bit more sense for all y'all military, non-military, everybody listening. So I'm going to talk to you today about the Siege of Petersburg, specifically create the Battle of Crater. Or the Crater, cr Battle of Crater? Yeah, whatever. Anyways, the Battle of Crater. So a bit of a preface, a preface. Um, the battle, the siege of Petersburg, and the siege of Richmond in general. Richmond, Virginia, being the Confederacy, the the South, their capital was in Richmond, Virginia. It's odd though. If you ever go to Richmond, Virginia, first of all, very cool town, underrated as hell. Um, but they have like a no crap Capitol building and like a White House type of thing that looks almost identical to the one in Washington D.C. Because this was their supposed capital. This is where like if their nation had lived, this is where they'd have their their um their whole thing going on. So you can go tour that still because it's, it's historically, it's all right there. Um, you know, you got to pay attention to history, even if you don't like it. Like, I'm not a big fan of the Confederacy, obviously, but, you know, it's cool to learn about what the hell they're trying to do. But towards the end of the Civil War, um, obviously the Union Army was romper stomping all over the South, uh, mainly due to, you know, obviously having increased manpower. Um, they were utilizing black soldiers. And then on top of that, they had a much more sophisticated and mechanized method of distribution of goods like what is it beans bullets and bandages you can get those things to your troops faster you're going to win a war and that's what the war, the north had been doing they really had a better infrastructure to deliver things on train and through uh, more built roads and stuff like that so that their troops were a lot better equipped and could be resupplied a lot faster than the south the south you know they fought their asses off um i hate them because they're trying to keep my people in chains but you know more props to them anywho the war is kind of winding down, and uh, obviously to win a war, typically you'd have to capture the enemy's capital. Uh, <laughs> you have to take their capital, um, and that's how, you, that's how you win the war. But before I get into this, I'm going to talk to this one right here. I can't say your name. G3 Dom Gum, whatever. The Raiders. I made a TikTok video talking trash about the Raiders. And that's hilarious because a Raiders fans, I forgot about this. This is a complete random, just a funny video I thought I'd make. The Raiders fans in the NFL are the most sensitive bunch of people in the entire freaking country. They are so sensitive. They got really, really upset that I made fun of their little stadium and I, I called it a gay bar. <laughs> They're really upset about it. I think it's hilarious. Um, and all the Raiders fans that are threatening me on TikTok right now, um, fucking come to California. I'm right here. I ain't hiding. <laughs> Please don't. I'm um, just joking. I know that all of y'all like your football team, have records. Um, so <laughs> stay the fuck away from me, crazy Raiders fans. Anyways, I digress. Back to the back to the battle. So the Battle of Petersburg, the Siege of Petersburg, because Petersburg and Richmond both were hubs of of commerce and of supplies for the Southern Army for the Confederacy, especially Petersburg, Virginia. Petersburg was actually a huge hub for their railways. Um, the, back in the time when the slaves were coming in, they would bring a lot of slaves in, a lot of goods. It's a lot of farmland down there in Virginia. Like if, if you go to Vir like obviously Northern Virginia, like Washington D.C., it's very urban, it's very hilly, it's very beautiful. But you go into Southern Virginia and Western Virginia, it's very very um, agricultural. A lot of farms, a lot of farms out there. Obviously, cotton. I think tobacco was a big one. Peanuts, um, anything and anything you, you'd want to com to build, to sell, to fund your war effort was coming through Petersburg. So the idea was, let's freaking take Petersburg. Now, Ulysses S. Grant, he was the future president of the United States, obviously, at around this time. He you know, they took charge of this, and he's like, oh, let's, let's knock it out real quick. So they try to invade and capture Petersburg because they figure if they get Petersburg, it's just south of Richmond. And they take Petersburg, Richmond will fall shortly thereafter because Petersburg is the big hub and a big supply line. Well, they siege the city, not a traditional siege, obviously, where they surround it like, you know, in the castle days and do all that. They, they attempt to capture the city. They get pushed back. And, yeah, they did not take the city. And <laughs> it... Turned into like a nine month battle, I think it was, or more even, yeah, it was a nine months. And it was one of the first examples of trench warfare. Because before, all the war had been like, hey, let's all line up and shoot at each other in a straight line, because that's silly as hell, right? Or let's maneuver a little bit, but mainly they're just lining up and shooting at each other across the freaking field with cannons and with muskets and rifles and stuff like that. But this is one of the first uh, examples of trench warfare. So basically, once they try to take the city, it doesn't work. So what uh, General, at the time, Grant, does is he digs uh, how many miles? How many miles of freaking damn... 30 miles of trenches around the city of Petersburg. 30 miles of freaking trenches. 
And this thing just turns into a, a standoff, kind of like you saw in World War I and stuff like that. Because remember, this is one, one of the last major wars before World War I. I think after this, shortly thereafter, uh, the Russo-Franco, or the Franco-Prussian War or something like that happened. So like um, they're trying to get into Russia. And that's where you see a little bit more of this trench warfare and a little bit more of a precursor to World War I and all that horror you saw there. But this was like a precursor to all that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, uh, more more comments on the Raiders post. Fucking, uh, I love I love my Raiders fans, except for the ones that threaten me. They can go fuck themselves. But <laughs> so they they dig these trenches and it turns into a hell on earth, right? Because trench warfare is not a good time. Um, and eventually, General Grant has the idea to dig a tunnel under the freaking trenches, under the freaking Union trenches, and all the way under the Confederate trenches, right? And what they do is they get up in here. It's a mine shaft, I guess. And then they pack it full of dynamite, TNT, natural glycerin, whatever the hell the explosive was at the time. I'm not a historian. If you want to learn more Wikipedia, this trash, or go to Petersburg because there's a fucking giant crater in the ground still where this all happened. But anyways, they dig this this freaking hole. They tunnel under. And then like the idea was we're going to blast a hole through the trenches and through the fortifications of the Confederacy. That way we can rush in there take their fort, take the city, and bing, bang, boom, now we have Petersburg under our control. Boom. That was their fucking plan. But I guess, like, when they made this plan, nobody talked about it. Because once they packed it full of dynamite, they exploded it. It was this giant freaking explosion. Obviously, this is in the era before sophisticated smart bombs and uh, obviously before nuclear weapons. And it's it's a massive explosion. Like, I'm talking gigantic magnitude of destruction like just totally rips apart the confederate flags or then the flags but it totally rips apart their trenches their fortifications all that trash just gets taken out by this one explosion it's huge and of course general grant's like hell yeah we just did it but what do the troops do the troops didn't know what the hell to do they were confused they were lost in the sauce so the dumbass officers they had on the ground there probably lieutenants no offense to lieutenants but yeah probably a lot of dumbasses they tell these motherfuckers, charge into the hole. Well, you can't charge into a hole that just got blasted because there's debris, there's fire, and on top of that, there are still Confederate riflemen up on the ramparts around the hole. So they send troop after troop after wave after wave into this crater to try to get through the freaking hole that they just blew in the Confederate lines. And what happens? They get stuck in the hole because of the debris, the loose ground, and then the freaking Confederates are sniping them. And So it's a big... Clusterfuck. That's the best word. Or fl- cluster. Yeah, it's a terrible situation. People are just meandering around. They don't know what the hell's going on. This perfect plan that could have worked fell apart because nobody knew what the fuck was going on. 100%. General Grant was actually quoted as saying it was the saddest affair they had ever seen in a war. Like the worst thing he's ever seen. And it's a real shame that it happened this way because it's like, the, the Union Army at this time, and then this battle specifically at Petersburg, it was one of the largest concentrations of black troops in the war to that day. And they, of course, sustained heavy casualties because of this piss-poor planning. So they run into this crater. All the Union troops are stuck in here, getting sniped, getting hit by cannons, getting hit by wave after wave of iron and bullets from the Confederate soldiers. And then what do they have to do? They have to retreat now. So this whole great plan, this sneak attack explosion under their trenches, under their fort to win falls apart. And it devolves into nine more months of trench warfare. No, no. Was it nine more months? Eight more months. This happened about a month into the battle. So like basically they they fucked up the whole thing and they, they could have won it right then and there. But they didn't because they didn't have a good plan. And if they had a good plan, like their plan was brilliant. They didn't have a plan for after the plan. Like, okay, shit, we just did it. Like it's like when you go to the bar. And you see a pretty girl and you, you shoot your shot, right? You walk up and you you lay your best line on her and you're like, hey, mama, you know, you shit with that ass or <laughs> whatever kind of <laughs> whatever kind of pickup line. Like, hey, was your mother a beaver? Because damn, you know, <laughs> you hit her with the best line thinking that that's as far as you're going to get. But then the broad's like, oh, yeah, hey, what's up? And you're like, oh, shit, what do I do now? Like, you don't know what to do. Like, you don't know what to do after you shoot your shot. Like, you weren't anticipating success. So now you flounder, you fuck it up, you don't get the number, you go home lonely, lotion on the nightstand with the t- with the tissue. Not a good time. Not a good time for anybody. That's what happens if you don't have a good plan for success. <laughs> so that's how it ties into my Vegas trip, I guess, because we were walking around, no plan, confusion, my feet hurt, frustration as hell. Now, obviously, the situation for me was way less dire because I did not send thousands of men to die. Um, in a hole uh, with fire and bullets and all that crap. But that's kind of what happens. If you don't train your troops to follow a plan, and if you don't have a good plan, you're going to set yourself up for failure. 
In this case, it was, you know, thousands of lives lost, months lost in a war that dragged on and on and on. Eventually, of course, we did capture Petersburg. Uh, Robert E. Lee, the, the Confederate general, the famous one, he, he saw the, the writing on the wall. The end of the war was near. So he abandoned defense of Petersburg and of Richmond, and he ran off to Appomattox, where he subsequently uh, surrendered later on. Uh, I think it was like a year later. But either way, it's such a, it's such a bad situation because of the lack of planning. So when you're doing anything, obviously have a plan for it. You, you got to have a plan for success. And that plan has to have multiple steps and it has to be practiced and understood by everybody involved. Because if you're the only one, if you're the general and you know this great plan, but you don't tell your troops, then they're going to be lost as fuck. They're not going to have success in their endeavors. So you as a leader, make sure that happens. And if you're a troop on the ground, obviously back in the Civil War, they really couldn't question orders or do stuff like that. But if you're a troop on the ground and you got questions about a plan, you make sure you ask those questions before the, the time to execute is upon you. Because if you don't, when it comes down to it and the chips have fallen and the clock is running, you're going to have a hard time and you could possibly be setting yourself up for failure. So that's our little history lesson today. Have a plan, follow the plan, practice the plan enjoy yourselves <laughs> all right so that's my little uh that was my little news thing and like i said this is gonna be a short episode i'm actually already almost done because the only thing i got left the only thing i got left right now is the daggone interesting insult of the week right because <laughs> we always talk about like don't just call people bad words don't just call them assholes let's talk about a fun way to tell somebody off and i do it by with this uh this shakespearean insult generator i'm gonna show it to the camera right here this guy right here boom a little $10 book or $12 book, you buy, bought it on Amazon, it's a good time. It's got a, over 150,000 insults that you can derive from Shakespearean text and you can tell somebody off without uh, them knowing what you just called them, which is always a good time because you don't want the boss to know you're talking trash about him if you can help it, right? <laughs> so the insult of, the, of today, don't call somebody an asshole, call them a puking snail paste scut, not slut, scut, a puking snail paste scut. So puking is self-explanatory. This is actually a pretty easy one because puking is self-explanatory. What is puke? You're vomiting. You're, you're throwing up. It's not a good time. It's not something attractive. It's something stupid. Snail paste. Slow in action and in thought. Slow as a snail, right? Snail trails. Ew. Uh, and then scut. This is a word I'd never heard before, so I was a little bit like, oh, scut. But scut is a short, erect tail of a deer. So basically, you're calling somebody a vomiting, disgusting, slow Deer's ass. <laughs> That's the fucking insult of the day. Uh, puking snail paste scut. That's the way you got to tell them off from now on if you really want to throw somebody for a loop with a, a new insult. But yeah, buy the book. Check it out. It's really fun. And you know, I guess that's the end of the fucking podcast. I really don't have much else to say or to do. Like I said, it's going to be a pretty short episode. We're just at 37 minutes right now, and that's with that's before editing, so <laughs> it's going to be like 20 minutes long. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That's on 20 minutes. But either way, I had a great time in Vegas. Um, if you get a chance to do some traveling, it's 2021, baby. You know, vaccines, no vaccines, whatever you do, um, be safe out there. Get some, get some traveling in. 2021 is here, and let's let's fucking party. Let's 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 enjoy ourselves. We got 2020 taken from us. It was a real bummer. But here, is the, the freaking pandemic is going down, let's fucking have fun. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to each other. Call your buddies. Call your mama. Don't be like me. And have a plan for everything you do. Don't be like those douchebags in Petersburg, all right? With all that being said, I think the working party has been concluded. Next week's episode will be a lot longer. Stay tuned to the social media. We will uh, be posting about that. I'm hopefully going to get a guest on, but we will see. We will see. But until then, the working party is dismissed. I, I, somebody. <laughs>